and <laughs> um, let's see if I can get this to work. So I'm talking about the human health chapter from the National Climate Assessment, and this next slide shows that it was a team of amazing experts led by George Luber from the Centers for De Disease Control and Prevention, and Kim Knowlton, who's with Columbia University and the Natural Resources Defense Council, and there were lead authors who were tasked to cover some of the health impacts of climate change and a number of contributing authors from a variety of sectors. And the link here is if you want to read the complete chapter. So what I'm going to talk about today is the four key messages from the human health chapter. And the first one is that there are wide-ranging health impacts of climate change. And these impacts um, relate to a number of climate phenomena, extreme weather events, wildfires, um, poor air quality, threats to mental health, and transmittable illnesses. And some of these health impacts, as Rosina indicated, are already underway. It's here. So the next few slides, I'm going to show you some pictures of some of these uh, health impacts and how they relate to climate change. So the next slide is about asthma, a condition that affects over 25 million Americans. And what we see here is a picture of a map of metropolitan New York City. And what this map shows is that with projected warming, we anticipate ozone, ground level ozone air pollution to worsen asthma. And they're projecting uh, up to a 10.2% increase in emergency room admissions for children with asthma as the climate continues to change and that are attributed to ozone pollution. So this next slide is for those of us who have allergies, uh, ragweed pollen season lengthens. So the idea here is that with global climate change, we have an increasing number of frost-free days and warmth, and so the actual season in which plants that produce allergenic pollens um, is lengthened, and thus people with allergies are suffering more greatly, and those who are sensitive to, to having allergies induced are also affected. The next graphic shows a satellite image of a wildfire that occurred in Quebec in 2002. And what we see from this image is that the smoke from the wildfire actually reached all the way down to Baltimore, Maryland. These wildfires produce fine particulate um, matter that can travel thousands of miles, and they measured levels of particulate matter in Baltimore 30-fold higher than usual. And what this particulate matter can do is it can reduce life expectancy, increase hospital admissions, people with chronic illness can be particularly affected. There was a, an estimate that wildfire smoke can contribute to up to 600,000 deaths globally. And we know that with climate change, we expect increased wildfires due to drought and warmer weather. This next map shows future projected change of the hottest days under two emission scenarios. So if we reduced emissions of heat trapping gases rapidly today, we're still going to see a little bit of a temperature rise into the next century. But if we continue business as usual, we'll see even greater temperature changes. And this is obviously relevant to human health in terms of heat waves, heat stroke, uh, mortality related to heat, and other related illnesses. Another projection map here relates to tick habitat of the tick that, um, that causes Lyme disease. It's the vector for the Lyme disease bacteria. And you can see that in the future, there are predictions that will, there'll be better habitats, more widespread habitats that are conducive to these Lyme disease ticks. And the human health chapter talks about other kinds of vector born disease that may well increase under some of the future climate change scenarios. And then to echo some of the talk about 
heavy precipitation events. Here again is some, a couple of maps that show that we expect to have more heavy precipitation events into the future. And the next slide talks about why heavy downpours and precipitation are relevant to human health. So there's a whole process. The primary concern would be waterborne and foodborne disease, but you have the in increasing downpours that maybe overtax the capacity of the sewage treatment plant. You can get not only um, overflow into surface waters, recreational waters where people can be exposed, um, but also flooding that can then result in health effects if people have water saturated furniture and belongings. So there's a whole range of health impacts that we know can occur um, related to heavy downpour. And then this is a, another satellite image showing a harmful algae, algae bloom in Lake Erie. And again, these algae can cause a number of health effects. Um, some of them produce toxins that can be airborne and they can also uh, contaminate food or water. So the second key message of the human health chapter is that the most vulnerable populations are at most risk of health impacts for climate change. So we already know about the health threats that I talked about previously, but we also know that those communities who are particularly vulnerable are going to be most affected by some of these climate change um, phenomena. And the next slide talks about some of the elements of population vulnerability to climate change. Number one is that the population is aging. These are all US-based statistics, and we know that older people are vulnerable to heat stress is one example. Um, asthma rates are rising, and so some of the air pollution, and particularly ozone pollution, is going to affect uh, people with asthma. Um, chronic, chronic diseases, respiratory disease, the rising rates of obesity, which also affect people's resilience to climate change and some of the exposures that come with that, and diabetes also. And then last and, and very importantly is the issue of poverty. People who are living in poverty, who lack the resources, perhaps the proper nutrition, access to health care, ability to protect themselves, are certainly vulnerable to climate change. And this next map shows the population of people who were displaced after Hurricane Katrina. It was 800,000 people who requested federal emergency assistance. And what you can imagine is the, 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 the mere fact of having to uproot and move across the country from your home of origin can cause all kinds of health impacts, mental distress, um, starting over, if you already were at the margins, beginning anew in a new place can be particularly challenging. So I'm going to end with the, the last two key messages of the human health chapter, which really are good news messages. The first one is that prevention can provide protection. So activities that public health uh, Practitioners are already engaged in to prevent disease in the population to prepare for um, certain, certain happenings that can affect people's health. If we just reinforce what we're already doing as preventive professionals, we can protect people from climate change impacts and acting early can provide these health benefits. So the longer we wait, perhaps our ability to adapt um, for future changes may be limited. And then the final good news, key message from this uh, chapter was that responses to climate change can actually have multiple benefits. So some of the things that might be done to reduce heat trapping gas emissions, for example, can help improve human health and well-being across many sectors. Um, the agriculture, energy, and transportation sectors, for example. The chapter talks about food security and the importance of good nutrition and availability of food for people's health. And so as we work together to respond to climate change, that's one of the things that can be um, 
reinforced. So uh, many of the strategies to respond to climate change can have benefits not only for protecting people's health to also um, providing other societal benefits. And with that, I'll conclude and refer you, if you like, to the, the website where you can read more in detail about the human health impacts. Thank you. Uh, it is clear that in terms of adapting to these changes, strategies that aim to reduce sediment, um, nutrient, and contaminant loads.